This video has been requested quite frequently by viewers and subscribers to the channel. This shows how well Sherry Martel is remembered and how much she entertained fans. Quite possibly the greatest female manager in the history of pro wrestling and for sure the absolute greatest female heel manager of all time, this video looks at the career and passing of sensational Sherry. Sherry Russell was born in New Orleans, Louisiana and grew up in Mississippi. She dreamed of joining the circus and loved professional wrestling from an early age. It was while attending a show in Mississippi with her sister that she met Grizzly Smith, father of Jake the Snake Roberts. Smith offered Sherry her first advice in the business, come back in five years when you've grown up. Sherry continued to dream and she did come back when she was grown up. Initially trained by Butch Moore in Tennessee, Sherry made her pro debut in 1980. Realising that she was still to reach her potential, she would seek specialist training from the most infamous woman in the history of the game, the fabulous Mula. At the time, Mula had a stranglehold over women's professional wrestling. It was alleged that Mula didn't provide proper training and took large amounts of money from most of the female talent that she came into contact with. Mula changed Sherry's name to Sherry Martel and sent her to wrestle in Japan. This wouldn't be the break Sherry was looking for. Mula would allege that Sherry enjoyed partying a bit too much and would not concentrate on her chosen career path. Whatever the real cause, Sherry Martel and Mula parted ways. After leaving the school, she travelled back to Tennessee. In Memphis, she was managed by Jim Cornette. During a mixed battle royal, Martel suffered an injury that removed her from wrestling temporarily. She then worked as both a wrestler and manager for Pat Rose and Tom Pritchard. After returning to the ring and jumping to the AWA, she became AWA Women's Champion after defeating Candy Devine on September 28, 1985. Not only would Sherry have two more successful title reigns of her own, but she'd help Doug Summers and Buddy Rose become AWA Tag Team Champions. After former AWA wrestler Jesse Ventura referred her to the World Wrestling Federation, she debuted on July 24, 1987. Ironically, her debut would come against her former trainer the Fabulous Mula, whom she would defeat to become the WWF Women's Champion. Sherry turned heel shortly thereafter, christening herself Sensational Sherry. Her 15 month reign was uneventful in the most part because WWF at the time rarely televised women's matches. In late 1988, she would drop the belt to Rock and Robin at a house show. By 1989, WWF was starting to phase out women's wrestling by featuring it less and less often. Realising this, Sherry would transform into a full-time manager role. Despite also being an in-ring performer, this would be the role many WWF fans would remember her for. Of note before going forward, we should also quickly mention that Sherry played the role of Peggy Sue during the Hunky Tonk Man's Intercontinental title reign. Martel distinguished herself from other female wrestlers and managers of the time by wearing outrageous costumes and face paint. She didn't want to be a carbon copy of fellow manager Miss Elizabeth, she wanted to make her own unique mark on the wrestling world and she succeeded. After being defeated by Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 5, Macho Man Randy Savage was looking for a new heel manager to replace Miss Elizabeth. Sensational Sherry would fit the bill perfectly. Throughout 1989, Martel and Savage feuded with Hogan and Miss Elizabeth. At SummerSlam, Hogan and Brutus the Barber Beefcake defeated the team of Savage and Zeus, and after the match, Miss Elizabeth knocked out Martel with Martel's purse. Then, she, Hogan and Beefcake cut Martel's hair. At WrestleMania 6 in 1990, Martel and Savage lost a mixed tag team match against Sapphire and Dusty Rhodes after Miss Elizabeth, who was in the corner of Sapphire and Rhodes, interfered and shoved Martel. A year later at WrestleMania 7, Savage lost a retirement match against the Ultimate Warrior in which the loser would be forced, in kayfabe, to retire. After Savage lost the match, an irate Martel attacked Savage but was thrown from the ring by Miss Elizabeth, who had been watching from the audience. 
Later on the same WrestleMania card, after she and Savage parted ways following the career match, Martel came to the ring to help the million dollar man Ted DiBiase in his assault on an injured Rowdy Roddy Piper, following which she managed DiBiase until 1992. Quote Cherry, Ted was down to earth, a very easy person to get along with. He demands professionalism when you go through the curtains and then to the ring. It's time to go to work and to make those people happy out there. Thanks to the creative thinking of Pat Patterson, subsequently Martel began managing Shawn Michaels in 1992. Quote Sherry Martel, I watched Shawn develop from a good guy with the Rockers and the AWA to a very classic heel. I never thought in a million years that I would be managing him years later. It shows you how crazy this business is and how many changes and turns it can take. He developed his character so well for his age and he is one of the nicest people I have ever met in my life. As part of the gimmick, Michaels would admire himself in a full length mirror before his matches. In 1992, before a match, his former partner Marty Jannetty grabbed the mirror and attempted to hit Michaels with it, but Michaels pulled Martel out in front of him. After being hit, she was absent from television until the Royal Rumble in January 1993. At the Royal Rumble, she was in a neutral corner for the match between Michaels and Jannetty, but eventually turned on Michaels during the match. Backstage, Shawn Michaels confronted her and Marty Jannetty came to her rescue. The storyline, however, was cut short as Marty Jannetty was released from the company in the midst of the feud. Martel spent the remainder of the year aligned with Tatanka, who aided her in her feud with Luna Vachon and Bam Bam Bigelow. She was released from the World Wrestling Federation during the summer for a failed drug test. After brief stints in the USWA, Smoky Mountain Wrestling, and a short time managing and betraying Shane Douglas in ECW, Sherry made her way to World Championship Wrestling. Martel made her debut on the April 23rd, 1994 edition of WCW Saturday Night. In an interview with Gene Okerlund, she said her goal was to find a man that can bring her the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. On June 24th, a title unification match took place at the Clash of the Champions 27 between WCW World Heavyweight Champion Ric Flair and WCW International World Heavyweight Champion Sting. Although she revealed in the beginning of the match that she sided with Sting, it turned out to be a double cross as she sided with Ric Flair who won the match and unified the titles. Sherry Martel then began managing Harlem Heat using the name Sister Sherry. She managed the team to 7 out of their 10 WCW World Tag Team Championship reigns. She continued to manage Harlem Heat until she got fired from the group on the July 7th, 1997 edition of Monday Nitro. Due to an addiction to painkillers, Martel was released by WCW when she showed up to a television taping in bad shape. She did briefly return to WCW in 2000, but she only made three appearances, one of which was a match with Medusa on WCW Thunder. In 2005, Sherry made her return to the WWE to take part in a storyline with Shawn Michaels and Kurt Angle shortly before WrestleMania 21. She made a return to SmackDown, singing a parody of Shawn Michaels' theme song with Kurt Angle. This is a well-remembered segment for both Kurt Angle and Sensational Sherry. There are some reports stating that to cope with the difficulties in her life, Sherry abused drugs and that at one point she was admitted to a 21-day inpatient rehab program to overcome her addiction. There isn't much details into the exact events of Sherry Martel's death. It has been confirmed though that Sherry died in her mother's home. Her date of death was June 15, 2007. She was 49 years old at the time of her death. Because she was in good health, her death baffled local investigators who said shortly after the discovery of her body that her death was likely not of natural causes. Sherry Martel was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame class of 2006. While she did appear to be under the influence during her speech, she was still very entertaining and she took the time to thank everyone who helped her in her career, including Ric Flair, Eric Bischoff, Ted DiBiase, Tom Pritchard, Buddy Rose, Doug Summers, Shawn Michaels and Randy Savage. When a fan shouted at her, you are drunk, she replied, shut up, this is my time, 
I worked 23 years for this and you paid for a ticket, so be quiet. <laughs>